ito ang 106.3 Dance Radio. Dance, Dance Radio. Prepare yourself. Ang silid aralan sa radyo. Hating namin ay makabagong paraan ng pagtuturo at kalaman. Mapaumaga, tanghali o hapon man yan. Ang istasyong magbibigay impormasyon kahit sa man. Alright, here we go. 106.3 Dance Radio. Doña Aurora National High School, Santa Rita, Aurora, Isabela. This. 106.3 DWBR FM. Facts and information. Today's learning for you normal with capable teachers whose heart and soul are divine. Delivered knowledge inside your home through 106.3 Dance Radio. Fully dedicated to serve the public in tribute to education, reproduce of radio-based instruction. We are pleased to deliver the utmost aim of education only here on 106.3 TWDRFM. Every decision we make reflects our evaluation of who we are. Good day, grade 10 learners. I'm Teacher Dennis. With me is Teacher Jennifer Velasco to give us the introduction. Hello, dear Donians. Good afternoon and a blessed Thursday, everyone. Good afternoon, Sir Dennis, Ma'am Venus, and Ma'am Beverly. Talagang masayang masaya kayo ngayong araw na to, no? So let's all be happy. <laughs> Today is another amazing day, another opportunity, and another chance for us to learn something new. To our officer in charge, the Chief Education Supervisor of SDO, Isabella, Sir Rodrigo V. Pasqua. Good afternoon, sir. An amazing afternoon also goes to our head teachers, especially to Ma'am Ophelia, the routine of the English learning area. Also to all teachers and staff of the Doña Aurora National High School. To all the parents, their students, and to all our avid listeners and viewers here and abroad, especially to our grade 10 learners, hello! A special mention to my grade 10 classes, 10 Banaba and 10 Molave. I am teacher Jennifer A. Velasco, and with me are the other grade 10 English teachers, equally beautiful as me. Mom Beverly Ramirez and Mom Venus Lintao, and of course, the only Rose among the thorns, Sir Dennis Mendoza. Yes, good afternoon to to all radio listeners and viewers via Dance FB live stream. Hello to Ten Obra, Mandy Lee, Einstein, Rutherford, Jimmy Lina, and Nara. I hope you are all ready to interact with us. Hello everyone, I'm Teacher Beverly Ramirez and I would like to greet the following grade 10 classes. Of course, special mention to my advisory class, 10 Talisay, and also to grade 10 Kamagong, 10 Mahogany, 10 Acacia, and 10 Almasiga. Yes, I would like also to greet grade 10 at 10 SPJ and 10 Sinag Talaw. And we hope you stay with us until the end of today's lesson. Yes, thank you so much, dear teachers. Indeed, today is another wonderful day, and we are glad to be with you as we embark on another fun-filled learning journey for our fourth and last lesson for the third quarter. And for today's lesson, you are expected to explain the different literary approaches and make a critical evaluation or analysis using any of the literary approaches. Yes, for those who are following us via our Facebook live stream, don't forget to comment in our chat box, hashtag lesson accomplice in grade 10 English. And we also encourage all those who are with us today to please share this FB live stream so that many learners and listeners will learn from our discussion. So click share. Yes, click share. So as of now, we have 56 viewers. Para mihin pa po natin, ano? Yes. Thank you for sharing, mga anak. And uh, before we proceed to the discussion of today's lesson, let's see if you really understood your previous lesson about writing a critic by asking you some questions to answer. 
answer. All you have to do is to key in the letter of your answer in our in the chat box. Winners will receive 200, 200 pesos ba ito? Ay, 20 pesos worth of love. 20 pesos worth of love. Pagkalalo mo na ngayon na. Pwede namang 200 kung gusto mo. Okay. Uh, here is it. Ito uh, na yun, ha? Nandiyan na ba? Yes. That the re re we, we have this review memory lane. We have this review memory lane where you need to give the correct steps in writing a critic. Is it? Uh, these, these are the, no, the, sta the steps, ha? One, evaluate the author's purpose. Two, write the introduction. Three, write the conclusion. Four, read and analyze the story to be evaluated. And five, evaluate the plot of the story. Saan kaya dyan yung magkakasunod-sunod? Yes. Okay? Is it A, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5? B, 4, 2, 1, 5, 3. C, 2, 4, 1, 3, 5. D, 4, 5, 3, 2, 1. Okay. Sagot na po tayo. Ayan. Of course, right. don't forget to write the item number before yes. the letter of your answer. answer. Okay. Key in your answers now for a chance to win 20 million peso yes. worth of last points. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sagot Again, na tayo, ha? no doubt. Okay, Ms. Magot na si Christine Cass Cassandra Valdez of 10 Mandalay. B ang sagot niya. Okay. Yeah. Ay, medyo matagal tayo Eliza sa Juan. B din ang kanyang sagot. Mm -hmm. Charles, Charles Michael Esponseca of Ten Malabel, mm -hmm. also Larry B. Shakira. Shakira, oh. Shakira, Shakira ba yun? Shakira, Shakira. Tyrell, Labagno. Shakira, okay. S. Javier, B. Mickey, uh, Castro. Mickey, Eugenio, okay. B. Okay, mostly answered Larry B. Let's reveal the correct yes, answer, Mang Bebs. Yes, the correct answer is... Da -da 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 -da. Yes, you are B. correct. Yay, yeah. B is... 4, 2, 1, 5, 3. Four, okay, two, sinong nauna, Sir Dennis? Ay, uh, usay mo na binata ni Ma'am. Cassandra from 10 Mendoza. Yes, oh. 10 okay. Mendoza siya. Ayan. Let's have number Christina two. Cassandra. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Christina Cassandra Valdez. Oh, 10 Mendoza. Congratulations. Congrats. Ayan. Number two. Let's have number two, ha? Ito naman ay... Uh, alam ninyo, bigyan sa amin letter na true ang sinasabi niya. Which is true about a critic. Is it A? It is... An in-depth evaluation of a certain text. B, it is a careful understanding of a text that will increase your understanding. B, uh, C, it can improve your understanding by looking at the ways other work. Or D, all of the above. Go! Yes, which is true about a critic. Your Number muna, tapos sagot. Ayan, Alwin Bernardo Ten Mendelib, 2A. A daw ang sagot niya. Okay, let's see other one. Oh. Si John Mar Galande Januaria Ten Tangili Tang Tangili Aiden ang sagot niya A? Aris de la Cruz B ang sagot Erica de, de la Cruz uh, Lavender It Lavender to John Jonah Jamaica Sangolan Castro Lair D Ayan. Black John. MJ mm -hmm. Also D Mikey is A oh, Sino na una Sir Dennis dito In my screen Ang una una dito na correct answer is what is the correct answer? Let's reveal the correct letter. letter. Yeah, it's, it's letter. Jonah, Jamaica, Tangonan, Castro. Castro yes. Ten Mendelib. Yes. From yes. Ten uh -huh. Okay. Oh, humahataw ang mga tech taga Ten oh, Mendelib. Patay niyo muna yun ninyo. Just ng internet connections, no? Wake up, wake up. Oh, wake other up, wake sections. up. Other section. Tama si ma'am. Okay, next. Last but not the least. So, tatanggap daw to 100. Tama ba? 100. Oh, yeah. Mr. Curtis, <laughs> Sir Dennis, ano? Okay, 20 pesos <laughs> How does critical thinking help you in writing a critic? Is it A, it enables you to, to, to use it to make your own arguments. B, it helps you make judgments and interpretation of the ideas and arguments. Or C, it helps you criticize a masterpiece. Or D, both A and B. Okay, may mga sagot na ba? <laughs> Any what? answer from uh, the above. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's get answers now. We have Is it A, B, C, or D? We may have nakikita na ako si Alwin Bernardo. Alwin Bernardo. Yeah. His Bernardo. answer is D. Okay. Charlene Joy, oh. Marcelo Saad, D. Ayala Jane Ferris, D. Yeah. Din. Mikey, Mikey Castro Eugenio, also Cast D. Uh, yeah, D. <laughs> Jasmine Medina of Einstein D. Oh. Lahat sila D. Tinanggan yeah, natin. Yeah, that's true. Right. Oh, it's oh, correct. Oh, it's correct. Oh, letter D. It's letter D. Yay! Okay, sino pong nauna? Uh -huh. Alwin Bernardo. Alwin. Very good. Bernardo. Okay, congratulations, Alwin. Ano section course? ni Alwin? 
What's next? Okay, na si Mendy Libman. Mendy Libman. Nangabak oh da. Guys, sa ibang grade 10 sections. Sila okay. okay. Ah, bilisan po ito. Congratulations to all the winners for our yes. uh, review part. Yes. Thank you so much, dear learners. And please sustain the momentum and stay with us hanggang sa dulo. Your Number. answers really show that you really understood our previous lesson. So for now, get your module and your writing materials because here now is your RBI lesson. So please enjoy listening and stay with us. Don't go away! Wala nang magkakapigil pa. Sulo, Arangkada, 106.3 Dance Radio sa Aurora, Isabela. Edukasyo'y susulong, basta nga magtulong-tulong, susulong at magkalitan. Dance Radio. Language, grammar, and literature. A program that will develop your vocabulary, comprehension, critical and analytical skills. This is the English Learning Area. Only here on 106.3, the WDRFL Dance Radio. Dance Radio for learning is amazing. Good day, dear learners, most especially to our grade 10 learners. We are now on the fourth and the last week of our RBI lesson for the third quarter. The title of your learning activity sheets for this week is Literary Approaches. Before we proceed, let's have a short review of our previous lesson. Last week, your lesson was writing a critic where you have learned the purpose and the format of both the critical essay and the reaction essay. Can you still remember the sequencing of ideas of both essays, my dear learners? Yes, ma'am! For a critical essay, we follow this order. 1. Describe author and work. 2. Summary. Write an accurate summary of the work's main ideas in the second paragraph. 3. Critic 4. State your opinion and 5. Conclusion whereas your reaction essay, we have only 3 parts. 1. Summary 2. Reaction and 3. Conclusion Very good! It's nice to base your essays on the examples, but much better if we have the format or sequence to follow. Is there anything you wish to ask, my dear learners? None, none. Okay, today we are going to accomplish these objectives. One, identify the different literary approaches. And two, appreciate and analyze the story of Kish using the different literary approaches. We are also going to explore the story of Kish. We will deepen our understanding of this selection using the different literary approaches. Before we finally start, let me ask you this question. What is your greatest contribution or accomplishment as a teenager in your community? Ma'am, being consistent honor student is my greatest accomplishment as a teenager. Very good! Any other answer? Ma'am, I am the lead proponent of Clean and Green program in our barangay. And I consider it as my greatest contribution as a young citizen. Wow! Continue being a role model and an inspiration. This time, let us find out how the main character in the story of Kish emerged as a hero and accomplished great things regardless of his very young age. 
Are you ready? Yes, ma'am! Let's have our first station, the structuralist or formalist. Listen to this part of the story, dear learners. Kish lived long ago in the rim of the polar sea, was headman of his village, died with full of honors with his name on the lips of men. In the winter darkness, when the north gales make their long sweep across the ice pack, and the air is filled with flying white and no man may venture forth, is the chosen time for the telling of how Kish from the poorest igloo in the village, rose to power over them all. He was a bright boy, healthy and strong, and had seen 13 sons. His father had been a very brave man, but he had met his death when he came to close grapples with the polar bear. He killed the bear, but he received the bear's hard blows that crushed his bones. The bear had much meat on him, and the people were saved. The good deeds of his father was swiftly forgotten, so Kish and his mother Ikiga became the menace of all the igloos. Let us consider Kish's dialogue. Kish at the Council It is true that meat be appointed me and mine, but... It is of times old and tough, this meat, and, moreover, it has unusual quantity of bones. Hear me, Yemen! Never shall I speak in the council again. Never again, till the men come to me and say, It is well, Kish, that thou should speak. It is well, and it is our wish. Take this now. Yemen, for my last word. Bok, my father, was a great hunter. I too, his son, shall go and hunt the meat that I eat. And no widow nor weak one shall cry in the night because there is no meat. When the strong men are groaning in great pain for that they have eaten overmuch. And in the days to come, there shall be shame upon the strong men who have eaten overmuch. I, Kish, have said it. Go, Yemen, with the dogs and sledges, and take my trail for the better part of the day's travel. There is much meat on ice, a she-bear, and two half-grown cubs. You have just listened to a portion of the story and the dialogue. Now, dear learners, how do you look at Kish? I look at Kish as a very extraordinary 13-year-old boy, ma'am. Exactly! He is not the ordinary 13-year-old boy you meet on the street. Look on the way he talked. He is full of sense. Do you know of any 13-year-old boy who expresses that level of thinking and skill? No, ma'am. He is a bright and skillful boy with man-like manners. Very good observation! If you were able to make a critic or an analysis on the elements such as our character Kish here, we actually use the literary approach called structuralist or formalist. What then is an structuralism or formalism? Formalistic or literary approach is the study of the selection based on the so-called literary elements which are more or less boiled down to the literal level, the affective values, the ideational values, technical values, and total effects map. Very good! Let us now move on to the second station, moralist. Let us consider the following words uttered by the different characters in the selection.
Nana, put the child out. Send him off to bed. He is no man that he should talk to men and greybeards. That a boy should speak in council. Shall the babies in arms tell the things we shall do? Am I man that I should be made a mock by every child that Christ for me? He will be back here long. long. Let, Let him go. go. It, it will teach him a lesson. lesson. And he will he'll come, come back, back shortly. And he will be meek and soft in his speech in the days to follow. How was Kish treated by adults? They thought that Kish was very boastful. He is likened to the famous cliche in Filipino, Nagmamalaki na wala pa siyang napatutunayan ma'am. That's true! Is this also the kind of attitude adults treat the young ones in our country? Ma'am, at times adults do not like to hear reasons from children. Hmm, I can feel your plight. They do not see you growing tall and strong, and they forget to see themselves growing old and infirm. With this, can you see our point here in your short stay at the second station, the moralist literary approach, my dear learners? We can see it very clearly, ma'am. The nature of man is central to literature. The reader or teacher or critic more or less requires that the piece presents man as essentially rational or one who is endowed with intellect and free will or that the piece does not misinterpret the true nature of man. Very good! What is again the term used for this approach, my dear learners? Moralist man. Okay! We have already discussed two literary approaches. We shall have more of this when we come back after a short break. Do you encounter problems in accomplishing the different activities in your modules or learning activity sheets? Worry no more because your teachers are always ready to guide and assist you. You can send your questions or clarifications in two easy ways. One, call or text. And two, private message. So easy, right? Remember, at Doña Aurora National High School, we make amazing things possible. This reminder is brought to you by Doña Aurora National High School in this station. Hello, I'm back. Let's now move to our third station, which is Marxist. What can you say about this literary approach? Marxist criticism describes how social class, economy, money, and power play a role in literary selections. The social class struggles in literature reflect how the low class are being dominated by the upper class in the society, ma'am. Yes, you are right. Actually, in our selection, when Kish's father died, Kish lived alone with his mother because Kish was her only son. People seem to forget Box good deeds. Being but a boy and his mother only a woman, they too were swiftly forgotten. Not too long, they became the poorest of all the igloos. How about their council, ma'am? Nice question! That is what I am about to tell you in the fourth station, which is the feminist. The world, even up to this time, is dominated by men, even if half of the population is women. Do you agree? Yes, ma'am. I noticed that in their council, no woman was involved in the decision-making for their village. Very nice observation, my dear learner. Literature in the past was gender-biased due to domination of male written texts. But this time, you readers as critics will look into how literature treats women. Hence, their roles, images, portrayals, character, 
and characterization shall uplift women's status from a discriminated or silenced one. The story of Kish will be more meaningful if you read it completely. You are the ones creating the meaning while you characterize Kish in his monologue. And may you be influenced by Kish's attitude of determination, courage, and fortitude to improve your personal identity. Let's now move on to our fifth station, the reader response approach. From its name alone, it is more focused on the response of the reader like what reader feels, thinks, and experiences while reading the text than what the author intends. Is it clear, class? Yes, ma'am! Finally, this is our sixth and last station, the historical approach. We analyze literature as both a reflection and a product of the times and circumstances in which it is written. This approach involves understanding the events and experiences surrounding the composition of the work, especially the life of the author, and using the findings to interpret a certain work of literature. Can you give a brief background of Jack London, the author of the story of Kish? Jack London was born in San Francisco, California in 1876. Some of his jobs were adventurous in places like Alaska and others, not so much like shoveling coal in a power station. He wrote passionately about life and death. He weaved his first-hand experiences at sea in Alaska and coal mining into his writing so as to make his writing seem very natural and real man. Very good! It is very exciting to know the past through literature because it combines history with feelings. Who can tell some historical events related to this election? Mom! Ikiga tore her hair and put soot of the seal oil on her face in token of her grief. Another is people in the North Pole like in Alaska build igloos as temporary shelters when they are stranded during gales or storms, ma'am. Excellent! Any more ideas? Ma'am! People eat polar bear meat as polar bears are abundant animals as food source. Your answers are all amazing. I'm sure you really understood our lesson. Meanwhile, let's pause for a break. Don't go away and I will be right back after a short reminder. Hello, good morning. Good morning, ma'am. I have just finished accomplishing the task found in my module. How can I send you my outputs for checking and feedbacking? Oh, that's a nice question. There are actually three ways for a student like you to submit your outputs. One, it could be via online. That is, if you are capable to connect online. You can just upload your outputs in your Google Classroom or you can take pictures and send them through your group chat or messenger account. Ma'am, how about if we do not have internet connection? If you do not have internet connection, you can submit your accomplished tasks in two ways. One, you can ask your parents to submit your outputs in the designated drop-off center. Two, you can save your outputs if you have available flash drive, CD, or DVD at home and submit it in the designated drop-off center in your respective barangay. Wow! It's nice to know that there are varied ways on how we can submit our accomplished task. Always remember, for submission of outputs, you can do it via online offline, or physical submission. Because at dance, we make amazing things possible.
Hello, I'm back. I believe we are now ready to do some of the activities found in your module. Let us answer activity A titled, What's more on page 8? Directions. Identify the approach described in each number. Choose the letter of the correct answer from the box. Write your answers on a separated sheet of paper. Here are the choices. A. Structuralist B. Formalist C. Moralist D. Marxist E. Feminist F. Historical and G. Reader Response Kindly read and answer number 1. This approach centers on the dynamics between genders in a text. The answer is letter E, feminist ma'am. Very good! Let's have number 2. This approach pays attention to the underlying elements that the text has in common with similar text. What is your answer? For number 2 ma'am, my answer is letter A, structuralist. Can it also be letter B, formalist, ma'am? Yes, you are right because formalist and structuralist are just the same. You may continue answering this activity after the broadcast. Now, let's answer the next activity found on page 12 of your module. Directions. Write T if the statement is true and F if it is false. Write your answers on a separate sheet of paper. Number 1. The Marxist literary criticism is inspired by Carl Jung. Is it true or false? Mom, false. Karl Marx is the inspiration and proponent of Marxist literary criticism and not Carl Jung. Very well said. Number 2. Nortra Fry contributed the use of five mythoi to identify and categorize structures used in the Western literature. What's your answer? The answer is also false, ma'am. Nortra Fry contributed the use of four and not five mythoi to identify and categorize structures used in Western literature. Exactly! You may also continue answering this activity after the broadcast. Let's sum up what we have just discussed today. What are the six literary approaches you have learned? The six literary approaches we have just discussed are the following. 1. Structuralist or Formalist 2. Marxist 3. Moralist 4. Historical 5. Feminist and 6. Reader Response Correct! Why is your knowledge of the different literary approaches important? Ma'am, with my simple knowledge of the literary approaches, I can create or analyze a literary work because they are the methods techniques, and choices that a writer uses in making critical literary analysis or an essay. Very good! Let's now evaluate how far you have understood today's lesson. Listen attentively to an excerpt from the selection titled, Why Women Wash the Dishes. The excerpt that you are about to listen to can be found on page 17 of your module. After listening, write on a separate sheet of paper a one-paragraph critic using the feminist critical approach. Here is now the excerpt of the selection, Why Women Wash the Dishes. Listen attentively. Why Women Wash the Dishes an excerpt by Philomena N. Colendrino. Kaugong's chest sank again. His chin also went down. He held on the edge of the table nervously. You, he said in a much lower tone. 
You are the woman. You should do all the housework. And what do you do? Ask Kamal Dam. You tie the carabao to the reeds in the field and then you lie down on the grass to watch it graze? You call that hard work? I cook, clean the house, wash your clothes. I scrub the floor. I do all the work that only slaves should do. And yet, you even refuse to help me wash the plate which you have eaten? Kamal Dang's voice was now raised to a high pitch and her tears posed in her eyelids at Ka Ugong and at her broom. She grabbed the broom. She raised the broom to strike him, crying, You! You! You lazy man! Ka Ugong ducked under the table. Don't! He cried. Don't strike me! Come out under the table, you coward! Ordered Kamal Dang. Okay, you have just heard the excerpt of the selection, Why Women Wash the Dishes. Again, write a one-paragraph critic using the feminist critical approach. Ma'am! Can we answer some of the questions found in our module to make our critique? Yes, there is no prescribed way in making your critique. You may use some of the guide questions in your module in developing your critical essay or analysis. Mom, may I read my simple critic? Yes, you may. Why Women Wash the Dishes is an anecdote of a short Amusing story about the couple named Kamal Dang, the wife, and Ka Ugong, the husband. In this story, the traditional social role of women, like taking care of the family and doing household chores like washing the dishes, are all but women's tasks and can never be man's obligation. This story calls for an appeal that discrimination against women must be stopped and there should be an equal treatment between men and women. Wow, that's very good! This time, let's have the activity titled What I Have Learned found on page 10 of your module. Given the chance to discuss one critical approach to a group of high school students like you, what approach would it be and why? And how would you go about your discussion? I repeat, given the chance to discuss one critical approach to a group of high school students like you, what approach would it be and why? And how would you go about your discussion? If I were to discuss one critical approach to a group of high school students like me, I would definitely discuss reader response because this approach focuses on personal experiences. It is like a text-to-self connection. I would discuss it with the use of multimodal elements or with the aid of ICT or audiovisual presentation map. Very well said! Surely, with the use of multimodal elements, anyone among you would be able to discuss clearly any of the literary approaches. So that ends our session for today, my dear learners. Indeed, this is another fruitful day of learning. On behalf of the production team, our technical specialist, Teacher Michael John M. Tumulak. All right! Our language editor, Teacher Annabel C. Acopido. Wow! And our content editor, Teacher Ophelia S. Relutin, head teacher of the English Learning Area. Thank you for staying with us for another session of fun-filled teaching and learning experience. This has been your radio teacher and your script writer, Teacher Jennifer A. Velasco. Once again, thank you very much and stay tuned for the live discussion. Language, grammar, and literature. A program that will develop your vocabulary, comprehension, critical and analytical skills. This is the English Learning Area. English Learning Area. Only here on 106.3, the 
WDRFL Dance Radio. 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 106.3 Dance Radio Sa Aurora Isabella Yes, yes, narinig ka na, narinig ka na ma'am. You're edible. Parang hindi ko narinig yung sarili ko. Sir Dennis? Ha? Sige, ay. Ang aking sound, ayan, sabi ko na nga ba, hindi talaga ako narinig eh. Salita ako ng salita rito. Okay. You have just heard our last lesson for quarter three. And to start with our discussion, may I ask you to answer this simple question. What makes a story interesting to you? Okay, no? While you're waiting for our learners to key in their answers in our chat box, fellow teachers, if you were to ask the same question, what would be your answer? Ladies first ba or the only rose among the thorns? Ladies first. Ladies first. May ano ba dito? May ibang gender. I'm just joking. Baka okay, Ma'am Venus is volunteering to answer your question, Ma'am Jen. Oh, sige. Yes. Okay, when waiting for the answers of our learners, what makes a story interesting to you? So the best story is have complete parts and um, they are comprehensive. Something that the story appeals to the reader. Yun yung sa akin. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we become interested in the story that evokes our emotion and thoughts, actually. If we can uh, relate to the narrative, it is also paramount that we know what we are reading so that the whole story is appealing to the reader. Wow, ano naman si Sir Dennis. How about you, Ma'am Beautiful, Ma'am Bebs? Ayan. Yeah. <laughs> oh, diba? Yeah. Wala ka beautiful si Ma'am Venus kanina. Well, Kasi yung pangalan niya na talaga, yun na beautiful na. I love reading stories. Siyempre. Of course, stories are interesting to me. Mm -hmm. If I can relate with the situation uh, of the different characters in the story, yung feeling ko parang uh, pinagdaanan ko din kasi yung mga yon. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, when the story evokes, or when the story bring out different emotions in me, lalong lalo na yung mga kwento na hindi ka lang pinapatawa, minsan pinapaiyak ka rin. Yes. Ano, kaya yes. Nag, uh, nag-visit ka, mga gano'n. Uh, kaya I tamang... I found those ano, things interesting. Mm -mm. Okay. Parang tamang-tama yung sinabi ng books. Um, there's no frigid like a books because books take us into many places. Uh, and into yes. different uh, situations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sagot naman ni Sire Labagnoy, no? Sabi niya, plot twist. Yan. Ay, may twist. May twist. Oh, Gusto niya may twist. Yung story. Mm -mm, ganun Ay, din kay ano. Especially yung sa dulo, eh, hindi mo in-expect na ganun oh, pa na siya. Oo nga. Yung parang akala mo magkakatuloy yan. Yung yes, palas yung hindi. Yes, tapos hindi pa lo. Oh, oh. ano? oh. Diba? Oh, ano pa? Pero may maliban sa plot twist. Wow, maliban sa plot twist. Ano pa kaya yung mga bagay na ba? paano ka nagigiinteresado sa isang kwento? Ano? Yan. Yes. Ako naman pag movie naman to mambebs kasi usually stories are being made or oh, oh. transformed into movies yung mga mm -hmm. characterization may yes. casting oh. yan maganda yun ako naman pag kay drama alam na this ah, pag ang main character ay si alam niyo na ay alam ko oh, na yan oh. ako basta si Lizzie yung tuk sa patina <laughs> <laughs> ako yung story okay, alam na alam na talaga okay sige okay. plot wow. twist yes. is one mm -hmm. oh. uh, one uh, sabi ni ano meron pa Oh. Yes. From Eliza Juan, uh, stories are meaningful. Ay, stories are meaningful and relatable. Sabi oh, naman, oh, okay. Sabi naman sa Idila Cruz uh, mm -hmm. ng Tenor de Ford, story is interesting to me if the plot is intriguing. Wow. Okay. Oh. According to Cyprian, Cyprian Andre Mamaspas, a very catchy title and a good storyline makes a good 
uh, makes the story interesting for Totoo yun. Yes, kasi Catch. minsan title pa lang, bakit kaya ganun ang kanyang title and you would like to watch it? And it Mm-mm. evokes critical thinking. Na yes, na- napapaisip ka. O, sabi naman ni Eliza Juan, tama yun, know, meaningful and relatable. Mm-mm. Okay. Yes. Um, talaga namang napakaganda ng mga answers ng mga estudyante natin, Sir Dennis. Yeah, ano? yeah nga, oo. So, kaya congratulations ha to those who share their real ideas about the question given. You know, our dear learners, uh, a literary piece is written with a certain purpose, okay? But the basic knowledge of literary approaches will give us better understanding and deeper appreciation of a written text. Yes, Sir Dennis. But of course, let's first define what is meant by a literary mm-hmm. approach. Ano nga ba ang literary approach? It is actually a lens by which we interpret literature. There are three elements in a literary exchange one might consider when making meaning from the text. Ano ba tong tatlo na to? We have the source, kanino nang galing, or who is the writer, what is the situation when the story was written? And of course, the text, yung article mismo, yung kwento mismo. And the last one is the receiver. And of course, the receiver, tayo yon, the readers. O kaya yes. pag movie siya, uh, yung mga viewers. Yeah. Okay, so don't forget the three uh, elements that we need to consider when talking about literary approach. Ma'am yes. Jen. So today, we will briefly discuss some of the most commonly used literary approaches. Take note that our knowledge of these approaches will help us write an effective literary critique. But before that, um, let's review first the parts of a critique, which was our previous lesson last week, no, Ma'am Debs? Yes. Okay, let's have a short recap lang muna. So, Take note that the four parts of a critic is what we call the introduction, which is number one. Mm-hmm. Ang Tagalog po niyan yes. ay panimula. panimula. Inilokano, panangrugi, wenuk, Paka- pakauna. Una. Okay, sa so introduction, usually nakikita dyan ang ating thesis statement, okay? Of how will be your story or yung kabuuan niya. And number two, you have the summary or buod. Ayan, in Ilocano, dagup. Okay. Ano, and of course, ang ano ang ano, napakalalim ang naman ano? parang kas, mas malalim pa sa ano sa, sa balon. <laughs> Dagup. Sa Mariana Trench. Yeah. Yeah. Dagup tibiyan. <laughs> it's my first time. Yes. Ano naman, it's my Ako first din time. talaga sinerch ko lang ito na ma'am. Oh. Summary yan. Um, kanyang binibigay ang gist ng story or the important events or yung mga talagang mahalagang bagay lang para alam mo yung overview niya. And of course, number three, you have the critical evaluation. At ito po sa critical evaluation ng Tagalog ito is pagsusuri. At dito natin gagamitin yung tiyatawag nating mga literary approaches. Ito lang yung focus natin today. And of course, the fourth part is what you call the conclusion or wakas. At naman sa Ilocano, pagibusan. Okay. Ay, tayo nagayem, tipagibusan. O, oh, yan. <laughs> Talagang alam ni Ma'am Bebsyang kasi siya dati si Tia Deli. <laughs> Pagsaralingan. Ayan. So, yan po ang ating parts of a critic. Huwag natin kakalimutan yan, o. Oh. Yes, thank you, Ma'am Jen, for helping us remember the four parts of a critic. From introduction up to the conclusion. So, brace yourselves, dear learners, as we now discuss the six most commonly used literary approaches. Yes. So let's okay. start with the first one. Siyempre, alam nga namang sa number six, no? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which is the formalist or also known as structuralist approach. This approach holds that the true meaning of a text can be determined only, take note, by analyzing the different literary elements. Ma'am, paano namin niya analyze? Hindi naman namin alam po ano yung mga literary elements. So don't you worry, just keep on listening and I will be uh, sharing with you some of these literary elements that we should uh, look into as we use the formalist or the structuralist approach. We need to analyze the literary elements. Yun yung kailangan nating uh, gawin when we talk about the formalist or the structuralist approach of the text and by understanding how these elements work together to form up a cohesive whole. So, ano yung mga literary elements na nabanggit? First, we have, we need to identify the setting. 
setting includes the time and the place and the situation or the the background of the story. Kailan siya sinulat? Saan? Ano ba yung sitwasyon sa lugar kung saan siya sinulat noong panahon na sinulat siya? Okay? Who are the characters? Of course, it's very important to know who are the moving spirits of the characters. At minsan yung mga characters na yon nagiging favorite character natin. And we can we can relate with their situations. Conflicts. Ano yung mga struggles ng main character? Ano yung tunggalian? Yeah. No. And then the plot. It's the totality of the story. And then theme. What uh, what what is the story all about? Does it talk about uh, revenge? Does it talk about love, honesty? So, yun yung sa theme. Next, we have another literary element that we need to consider are the literary devices. And when we talk about literary devices, we mean figures of speech. Ito yung mga simile, metaphor, personification. Yes. Uh, alliteration. Onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia, irony, and the like. Yeah. Imagery, ano naman yon? If it is used in poetry, novels, and a any other literary pieces, the author made use of vivid description. Very clear na description na pag binasa mo, alam mo yung hindi mo na kailang mag-imagine, parang nakikita Kita mo, mo na. na. O kaya nararamdaman mo mismo yung feeling kasi very clear yung description ng yes. author. It does not only paint a picture but aims to portray the sensational and emotional experience within the text. Kaya nga minsan engross na engross tayo kasi yes. ramdam natin, no? Kahit Pag siguro, ano, ano, no? parang Yaka humihinga. Talaga. O, o parang humihinga yung mga characters. Talagang yes. sasalita. And aside from that is the symbolism. Uh, in a, a story usually uses symbolish, symbols. They can be words people, marks, or locations, or abstract ideas to represent something beyond the literal meaning. Just like, for example, later on, we shall be using symbolism yata, Ma'am Jen, ano, in our discussion. O kaya, in yes, one story, Bears. merong gamit ng rose. Rose that could symbolize a woman, o kaya, love. Ayan. And then, we also need to look into the structure. Uh, it refers to how the words are structured or organized and of course we also need to look into the language or the style of writing that the author made uh, use in his or her story. So th that is for formalist or the structuralist approach. We now proceed to the second approach, Ma'am Venus. Yes, yeah, so... Uh, na discuss ni Ma'am Bebs yung first approach which, which is the um, formalistic approach, di ba Ma'am Bebs? Yes. So now let's proceed with historical approach. So historical approach, it involves the understanding of the historical and, con and cultural context or condition that influence the production of the literary work. With this approach, one possible question to answer is have any of the words in the text changed its meaning since the text was written? So here in the historical approach, it involves the understanding of events and experiences surrounding the composition of the work, especially the life of the author, and using the findings to interpret the word, the work of the literature. So dito, um, yung karanasan ng may akda. So the uh, yung author ay um, nakakaapekto yun sa paggawa ng kanyang akda. Parang ganun. Kunya example niya is ay yung kamakaranasan niya sa buhay. Bakit puro violence something like that? Yung background niya dun sa time na yon is ganun din. Parang ganun. Okay. Another yes. ano additional to yes, that is for example, uh, kasi it says there when we use historical approach, we include our understanding on the events and experiences surrounding the composition of the work, no? Halimbawa, yung kwento ay sinulat nung panahon ng may gyera, expected mo na parang may something din dun sa kwento na tungkol sa tunggalian, yeah. pag-aaway, ganun. O kaya yung main character ay yung author, si author ay parang si ano, si... Sino yung mag-drunkard ma na kwento ay na, na author? Si Edgar Allan Poe. Kaya yung kwento yung niya rin ay ano, mga makabir. Yes. 
weird, bizarre, ganon. Yes. Uh, that also falls under historical approach. And of course, okay. let's proceed to the third one, Sir Dennis. Yes, hindi, siyempre, hindi matatapos dyan. Dahil meron tayo, bagamat may formalist tayo, may historical, we also have moralist approach. Ito lagi itong meron to sa lahat ng ating mga binabasa at magbabasa. Okay? To study literature from the moral or intellectual perspective or point of view. Therefore, it is to determine whether a work conveys a lesson or message and whether it can help readers lead better lives and improve their understanding of the world. Dito, tinatalakay ang mga moral issues kung ano ang tama at maling mga gawain ang ipinapakita sa kwento. Yes, thank you, Sir Dennis. Ano? And of course, let's now move to the fourth approach, which is the feminist approach. Ayan, from the word, the gender is feminine. This approach focuses on female representation in literature, paying attention to female points of views, concerns, and values. O dito, one of the possible questions to answer is, how are the roles of males and females defined? Mayroon bang pantay na karapatan ang mga babae at lalaki? Mm -hmm. Ayan. So, ito yung mga titignan natin sa mga feminist approach. Okay? And also, we have the fifth one, which is the Marxist approach. Of course, our proponent is Karl Marx himself. This approach examines how the text represents and treats the power dynamics between social classes. Take note of the word social classes. Kaya nga ang isang tanong na pwedeng sagutin, how do characters different oh, characters of different social classes interact or conflict? Pantay ba ang karapatan ng mga mayayaman at mahirap? It talks about um sabihin natin inequality due to your social class, okay? The oppressed are being oppressed. Ganyan ang mga storylines na pwede nating i-analyze sa Marxist. Okay? And of course for the last type Yes, we have this the reader response. Na. This approach focuses on personal significance to the reader. Ano yung, ano yung bagay na, na nag, 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 sa, tawag ito, parang nag pop sa yo or something na, uh, ano, ano yung gusto sabi ng text na ito sa yo? What does the text have to do with you? Personally, personally, including your past, present. Ito yung parang lumalabas dito, ma'am, yung reflection. Yeah, it's Ay, more of yeah. reflective. Kaya more, nga, yes. reader response is also mm. yung parang I approach. Oh, ano, tungkol ano, sa sarili mo. Okay. Ano ba? Ano ba? Ano ba natutunan ko dito? Meron ba ako may apply? Ganun yeah. parang ganun, ba? At kung ano man natutunan ko, ano naman ang kailangan kong gawin? So yes. that is a reader's uh, reader response. Okay. Okay, thank you dear teachers and there you have it dear learners, the six most commonly used literary approaches. Anim lamang po ang aming diniskas, ano? At marami pa po ito. So, para mas higit nating maintindihan, we shall be presenting to you a story. Okay, or the gist of the story titled Dead Stars, written by Paz Marquez Benitez. And we will show you later a sample critic evaluation or analysis using some of the literary approaches. So let me start. So itong ating gist ng story, Dead Star. It is a short story of an over 30-year-old bachelor, Alfredo Salazar, who was about to get married to his fiance Esperanza. Mm -hmm. Ayan na. His love and passion for his fiance started getting, getting faded as he was attracted to another woman named Julia Salas. As Alfredo knew that his family will disapprove his desire of having another woman, he unwantedly married with Esperanza and started his own family. Ayan, ang lungkot naman ng part na ito, no? And to move on, later after eight years, Alfredo went on a business trip to Julia's place. Wow, ang haba niyan. In his visit to Julia, to his surprise, he recognized that he no longer feels attracted to her anymore. He compared his love for her as dead stars. His memory of a long way to get a girl he thought he loved. Akala lang pala niya, no? So, sige, bigyan pa natin ng mas malinaw na kaganapan kasi gist lang ito. Okay, sampu lang. Ay, joke. Gist is uh, important lang. the story. Alfredo, one of the main characters, was introduced to us and 
He is already engaged yata no. Yeah, to with Esperanza Mambems. But he fell in love. May nararamdaman siyang kakaiba sa isang babae, Julia. Julia. Grabe ni Julia talaga no. Okay, so let me present you the story in a more vivid way using Freytag's Triangle, okay? So let me begin with exposition where the characters and setting and some situations are being presented. Alfredo is reflecting on the mess he made out of his life or his love, hearing from the background the conversation of Carmen and Don Julian about his relationship with Esperanza. At some point in, in a trip, he met the innocent and naive Julia Salas from whom he found what he was lacking. Ano kaya ang kulang na naramdaman niya nung nakilala niya si Julia? That's the exposition. Characters are presented. Let's move with the rising. Sir Dennis, uh, common ba yun na pag may engage ka na eh, meron ka pang nararamdaman, meron pa possible na meron ka pang nararamdaman sa iba? Sa lahat, lalaki naman na, tot normal yan. Okay. That's normal. Um, um, parang yan. Pero, you are into agreement to Alfredo himself, in, uh, one hindi, of the pag characters. Pag sinabi natin no? normal, katulad na, uh, normal, pag sinabi natin normal, nangyayari kasi lahat. Sa bagay ko lang naman, siguro na, na trigger lang. Okay? Maybe ituloy natin yung story, baka makarelate ka pa, sir. Oh. No? <laughs> okay. Now, <Lista> ako. <laughs> for the rising action, dito kasi pinapakita yung complication and now the story is being built. Ano pa kaya? Okay. After being overwhelmed by his emotion for Esperanza, the tide had gone low and east. Yan, parang nan, nalumpa pa. Na, medyo nawala na yung kanyang gana kay Esperanza. Maybe because of ang haba na siguro ng kilang relationship. He is no poet, but with Julia, he felt more lively as a placid man as he could be. The night before Julia's departure, he tried to convey his feelings. But their relationship had gone no better. Ayan. Tumanggi na siguro ito. Sino kaya ang nangyari? Buti na lang tumanggi si Julia. Yeah. And now, yun? let's wait for the climax. Ito na. Ano kaya ang pinaka mas mahigit pang nangyari? For the climax, it is where the most intense emotions are felt. Okay? Dito rin yung tinatawag nating turning point. Now, nagkaroon na dito ng argumentation itong dalawa, yung magkasintahan. Oh. Kasi nga, nalaman na ni Esperanza na meron na palang ibang kinalolokohan itong si si Alfredo at yun ay si Julia and he, she tried na kanilang ibaliwala na ang kasalang na pag-usapan kasi nakapamanhikan na silang lahat but still the marriage has to push through kasi nga scheduled na okay at noong unang panahon mga moms ano alam natin yan na kapag sa usaping kasalan at nag-usap na ang dalawang partido ng pamilya Medyo mahirap nang baliin ang pinag-usapan kasi ano sa Ilocano yun? Kababainan, uh -oh. tipamilyan, ano, especially. Saka, in the first place, why will you offer to marry someone kung may nararamdaman ka pa rin pala sa isa? Diba? Yes. Don't go to a marriage if you're not yet that sure. Uh -oh. Kasi Very kasalan 100, na yan eh. 200 percent. Yes. Uh, hindi pwede yung dalawa kasi <laughs> people were... Nakaka-relay dyan. Only have one. <laughs> one partner in life. Yung iba nga, wala pa eh. Magpasalamat ka na meron. <laughs> yes, kaya nga meron siguro, isa. ganun na lang din siguro yung ating pakikipag-relate dito kay Esperanza. Kasi kung tayo yung nasa sitwasyon ni Esperanza, oh. di ba ang sakit naman na siguro nun, di ba? Yan si Sir Dennis, siya si Alfredo. <laughs> bakit, na, bak bakit ka makikipag-engage? Hindi ka naman pala short. May nararamdaman. Yes, naman before you... Di ba panluloko yun? Talaga, Tama. Eh, talaga to si Esperanza, oh. Kaya mga, Ay, mga kasama dyan, nakameran <laughs> kayong ano, alam na yes. din. Yes. Tandaan natin that marriage is something very sacramental and sacred. Ano? Kaya bago natin pasukin yan, talagang pag-isipan natin mabuti. Tama, pag-isipan. Mag yes. Mag-emotion lang, mag-isipan. Oh, climax yan, ano? nasa climax tayo, oh, parang bakas na. <laughs> kaya mas mataas ang, ang isip kaysa sa puso. Okay, kaya ano, napangiti si Sir Marco. Yes. Napangiti ano kayang si nangyari Mark? after the confrontation? If you were Esperanza, would you do the same mga teachers or their teachers? Ako? Ako si Esperanza. Oh. Depende. <laughs> okay, but Siguro Esperanza. Siguro sort of confrontation na, naman. Oo, siguro na ayos din ano. Subukan na lang mahari. Okay. Subukan nga natin if they push through ba? Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. For the fourth part of the story, which is what we call the falling action, this is now the result of the climax, okay? Uh, the wedding is still materialized. Nice. Kasi nga, napag-usapan na. 
Thus, this is the reason why the wedding pushed through. Um, he chose not to bend his word and avoid social humiliation. Ayan. So, nakulong na siya ngayon sa isang kasal. Years later, his profession called him for to, um, called for him to go to the town where Julia um, lives. But he found out Julia is still unmarried. Okay. Oh, may karugtong pa ba ito? Baka may karugtong ba yung kanilang... Ah, ituloy natin ang nakasaan. May ganun pa bang serye ito? Uh, uh, okay, let's find natin. out. Now, let's have the fifth one of hip part, which is the resolution. Okay? In here, characters try to resolve the problems and issues para matapos na at wala nang problema, no? During all his years of married life, uh, we speak of Alfredo, he had now come to a closure after meeting Julia once again. He realized now the answers to his, to his what-if questions. Now, these questions hardly interest him anymore. Meaning, hindi na pala ganun kahalaga sa kanya yung what-ifs niya. Okay? What, hap, what would be the ending of this story? Nagkaroon na ng closure sa kanya, no? And the closure and the conclusion, I mean, the fifth or the sixth part. Now, finally, finally, he realized that everything is not the same as it was before. He understood that he had been looking up into a dead star all along. It's only a reminiscent of the past that no longer exists. Alam niyo ba yung kantang, I remember the boy, but I don't remember the feelings oh, may mga anymore. Na Alam mo yun, Sir Dennis? Oh, oh talagang you still remember, you still have the feelings. Everything you remember clearly. My God. You remember <laughs> clearly, ah? Mga boys na yun. <laughs> okay, ganun yung story niya. Akala pala niya, meron pa yung kanyang pag-ibig, pero ito pala isa na lamang between walang, walang ningning. Ning. <laughs> Uy, magayon yeah. ba? May magalit, ah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ayan yung dinoma natin, the oh, ending. Ano? Sana you love oh, the story. Si we hope um, na yung... Buti naman at na-realize niya. Ni yes. Yeah. Uh, hindi naman pala talaga siya in love. Sana yung mga nagtagapakinig natin, ma-realize din nila. Baka kasi meron din kayong situation na nakaka-relate kayo dito. Ma-realize nyo rin na you just remember the boy or the girl but no longer the feeling. Uh, yes, and it's always nice to remember kasi alam mo, may mga bagay kasi tayong pag naala natin May mga bagay talaga mo. na ano din, masarap balik-balik na yeah. masarap may, Marami na tayong natutunan sa past Huwag natin na. ano? <laughs> Although they keep saying that past it is past balikan. Pwede mo pa rin siyang i-review kasi marami kang, hindi ka naman dumaan doon Bakit ganyan ka ba ngayon? Yeah. Parang ganun, balik ka na ako nga Mas especially pag nakamove on ka na Yes, baka yung, yung mga hindi pa nakamove on dyan talagang Yung talagang hindi makabalik-balik kasi baka tuluyang bumalik Ang mga nararamdaman. Yeah. Okay. So, thank you so much Ma'am Jen for ano for discussing to us the summary of the Dead Stars by Paz Marquez Benitez, no? Ang ganda ng kanta yun. I remember the boy, but I, I don't remember, remember the boy. Oo, oh, oh, by okay. by Joey Marquez. Ang <laughs> 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 anak ni Paz Marquez. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so itry nga natin i-critic yung Dead Stars ni ni Ma'am Paz Benitez Marquez using some, no? Kasi we'll not be using all of those literary approaches. Remember po our dear listeners, there are stories na pwedeng uh, i-critic natin using one, using two, using three, o kung mahanapan niyo yung anim na approaches that we have discussed a while ago, then better. Mm -hmm. I mean better. Okay? Yeah. Uh, diba? So let's try to analyze the story that stars using the uh, for, kasi ako nag-discuss, ako din ang mag-analyze using the approach that I have uh, discussed with you a while ago which is entitled titled formalist or the structuralist <laughs> approach. Okay. So <coughs> using this approach, we have found out uh, five uh, five things yata. Number one is, <laughs> it utilize the third person point of view. When we say third person point of view, the author uh, made use of the personal pronouns they, she, he, it, at iba pa, na under per third person point of view. The tale utilizes the third person and is put at the beginning of the 1900. Another, number two, it used foreshadowing as a writing 
technique. It foreshadowed the location at the time's cultural makeup and dominant opinion. So that's number two. Another is it illuminated. It presented different kinds of conflict or struggles or tunggalian ng main character and the other uh, characters in the story. Of course, when we talk about conflict, Nandito po sa ating slides yung mga usually most common kind of conflict that we can find in stories, di ba? Meron yung man versus himself, yung kalaban niya mismo yung kanyang sarili. Pwede ding man versus other man. Ako, for example, kalaban ko si Mang Venus or may struggle ako with my kapitbahay, with my lover, mga ganon. Or could also be man versus society or nature. So in the in case of the dead stars, Alfredo battled with himself as he's been caught doing the correcting or if we can say the incorrecting when he fell in love with. Syempre nakipagtunggalian din siya kanyang sarili the fact na he was already engaged at tapos may nararamdaman pa siya sa ibang tao. Mahirap nga 'yon, 'di ba? He also struggled against society especially during the time of the story. Kasi nga, what, anong masasabihin ng mga taong nakapaligid sa kanya? The fact na malapit na siyang ikasal, eh may nararamdaman pa rin siya sa iba. Pwede ba yun? Of course, hindi, di ba? Most especially with the culture that we have. We are Filipinos kasi this is a Philippine literature ano, masterpiece, yung Dead Stars. Sa ating mga Filipino, malapit ka ng ikasal. O kaya kahit may ano ka palang, di pa kayo malapit ikasal, dapat wala ka ng yes. ibang tinitingnan. Fidelity and loyalty must oh, be practiced oh, kasi yun na yun eh. Fidelity and loyalty that much. Di ba? Yes. Huwag tayong mag-wifi. Okay? And so, and we also have <laughs> the fourth one. Kasi ako ang nag-discuss kanina. Symbolism. Okay. The story made use of dead stars which represent dead feelings. Yes. Okay. And then, in Filipino sana, yung bit, may between, pero hindi na siya nagniningning. Kasi wala na siya yung feeling. And then, the fifth one is the theme. Of course, we can uh, say that from the story, forbidden love is apparent and it haunts the person until he or she realizes his or her fault. Yes. Okay. Ako pa ba yung isa? <laughs> Ayan na, okay. okay. So, thank you, Ma'am Bev. Yes. Ano? Si Sir Dennis naman na. And marami din yata siyang gustong sabihin, Sir Dennis. Ayoko na. Hindi, <laughs> 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 ganito yan, indigenous people kasi pinag-usapan natin. Ha? I mean, when it comes to indigenous people, meron tayong matatawag na kultura. Diba? And since we are talking about love, well, there are many extraordinary and impossible things we can do in the name of love. Yes. Diba? Perfect example dito, as we learned from our previous lesson, tama? Sa, sa Taj Mahal, di ba? One of the most expensive gift e ever given by Emperor Shah Jahan for his beloved wife, Moon Taj Mahal. Minsan, gusto din natin hilingin na sana, ano nyo, mahal din tayo ng taong minamahal natin. Ayan. Kaya nga, kaya nga din siguro, no, nauso ang love charms, love potion, or what we call gayuma. Sa Tagalog, gayuma. Sa Ilocano, gayuma din. O kaya gayuna sa iba na ang tawag daw ay imog. Ma'am, ma ma sino ba pwedeng si Ma'am Ari, Ma'am Jen? Whatever the term basta gayuma ang pinag-uusapan yeah. natin dito, no? Para mm -hmm. naman mapang-akit. Na yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. yes. Talking about love charms. Ayan. Ayan. May sharing ako. Yeah, 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 yeah. Love charms or love potions Ayan. have been believed in among all people and are believed in today, especially prevalent among the Orientals. The Ifugaos, ayan of the mountain province are no exception. And their love potions and charms are most curious and interesting. Mm -hmm. The Ifugaos are superstitious pe people. It is to be noted, however, that among the supposedly enlightened ancients, belief in love charms was also prevalent. Meron ngang isang, ano, isang, what do you call this, tribo, mm -hmm. uh, ng mga Ifugao, na ang tawag sa kanila ay Ahins. And... Uh, they are known for preparation of leaves of tiny fern-like plants growing in the steep mountain sides of their locality. Pero yung preparation is not easy kasi they need to look for an herb. Herb. Herb siya. Anong, alam natin ang herb? Yung mga tanim, mm -hmm. di ba? And, syempre, hindi lang po ano-anong klaseng tanim. Dapat ito ay niliparan ng may particular na ibon. Tapos, they will get it. 
And then the man na gustong magpagawa ng love potion, kailangan niyang mag-sacrifice ng isang, ano yung hen? Babaeng... Manok. Manok upa. O kaya kung wala, dalawang pato. O and isang chick. Ako, isa ngayon natin, baka apat na to kasi tumas na gasolina. Oo. Tapos habang ginagawa, tapos na habang nag-offer at ginagawa yung herb, kailangan may nagcha-chant yung mga ka, mga Hendo. matatanda Hendo. doon. And then, uh, after uh, having the potion, is thereafter kept at the waist of the possessor sa kanyang g-string or sa kanyang pouch. It is believed that uh, henceforth easily draws the attention and love of the young Maidens. Yung pinaka-potent ng kanilang love charms can even quiet any dog. Patatahimikan niya yung aso and make it friendly at first sight. Sometimes the charm is put in a small bottle filled with coconut oil. A little of the oil is surreptitiously put on the hair or hand of the desired girl para yung girl ay maakit. Ma mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Ganun pala ang love potion. Siguro si Sir Dennis gumagamit ito ng love oh, potion. Huwag kayong magkalala, mga sidyante ha. Huwag din nyo kailangan gumawa na may tinitinda si Ma'am Jen ganyan. <laughs> okay, lang. alam natin no, yung speaking of love potion na to sa Kiapo, alam kong maraming ganito. But we need to be very cautious of what we buy. Don't just be Dapat um, easily muna. ano. Huwag tayo biglang naniniwala <laughs> kasi alam natin maraming mga propaganda techniques ang mga nagbebenta. Yes. Uh, let's be all cautious. Pag nagbebenta ng laso, subukan mo uh, muna. Ayan no, thank you Ma'am Bebs no. Yes. And of course, since we're talking about love, let's always be reminded that before loving others, mm -hmm. we must learn first to love ourselves. Sabi nga ni Whitney Houston sa kanyang kanta, the greatest love of all is, of course, loving learning yourself. Love. Or learning to love yourself is the, the greatest, greatest love, love of, of all. all. And the question is, how do we practice self-love? Here are some tips Ayan. for self-love, okay. Ma'am Debs. Let's have, number one, of course, be optimistic and be happy. Surround, your, uh, surround yourself with masayahing tao, and of course, the right person. Happy people. Yes. Number two, forgive yourself. We are just human beings. We commit mistakes, and from these mistakes, we learn things. Yes. Number three, list down your accomplishments. Number four, give yourself a break, but don't break yourself, okay? Magpahinga kung pagod, pero wag susuko, okay? And lastly, number five, force. Take care of ourselves, and how do we do that? Avoid vices. Um, don't indulge yourself yung mga prohibited, prohibited drugs and everything. Have enough sleep and of course, eat balanced diet and regular exercise para naman maintain daw ang figure. Okay? Okay, so thank you Ma'am Bebs for sharing an example of vertical evaluation using structural system approach. And, and as well as Ma'am Jen for giving, <coughs> giving a tip to love ourselves better. So, Uh, kanina na discuss na na <coughs> nagkitik tayo using yung sinabi ni Ma'am Beth. Now we will have historical and moral approach. So based din natin sa story ni Paz Marquez Benitez. So the story of the dead um, the dead star reflects the dominant culture, opinions and conferences of both literature and culture. It exposes the different natural feelings such as love, compassion, jealousy and lust. L U S T po yun ha. And, uh, part in, and participation in interactions like yung engagement doon, yung courtship, yung relationship, and personal duty. So the story is infused with moral and intellectual approaches that, e that emphasize the values and morals that exist in that, in that age, culture, and place. Histor historical and the, histor the historical context of the story give its prominence in terms of understanding the characters like Alfredo, Julia, experience of thought and actions. Yung, uh, yung thoughts, yung isip ni Esperanza. So dito, yes. it also represent the malevolence or yung hate or agreement such as cultural norm, yung more procedure and cultures. And then, meron pa dito um, um, ano pa yung inanong dito? Yung mascul ma mascul masculine exceptionalism ni Alfredo. So, Alfredo, on the other side, he is depicted by weak will, easy to, sed to seduce, di ba sabi ko kanina yung last, L-U-S-T, mm -hmm. contorted by her, in, by his, sorry, evolving feelings and susceptible, irrational 
behavior toward dun sa story ni kay Julia, kay Julia sa akin. Yes, I agree with Bambinos, no? Yung kanyang topic is moral and historical. Basta, when we say moral, of course, lesson we draw from the, yes. no? And of course, historical, um, tungkol sa culture. background ng writer, pwede rin sa culture and the sit a situation where when and where the text was written. Okay. Of course, my dear learners, those are just six literary approaches and how some of them were used to analyze the story from the Philippine literature titled Dead Stars by Paz Marquez Benitez. Also, don't forget in making a critique, you need to consider the four parts which are the introduction, summary, critical evaluation or analysis, and the fourth one is what you call the conclusion. And now let's proceed with the wrap up. Okay, Mom Bebs, yan. Learners, please type your answer ano, in our chat box. Using the given pictures as your clues, write your takeaways or your learning that summarizes our lesson today. Here are the pictures. Tatlo po itong larawan, ano? Ayan. Gamit ang mga larawan na ito about sa ating topic ngayon, can you make a summary of what have been discussed? The first picture, ayan, yung may mga parang mga pentagon ba yan? One, two, three, four, five. Five sides ba yan or six? O hexagon pala yan eh. Okay, six sides. And the next one is yung may lens. And of course, the third picture is yung may ilaw sa ulo na may binabasa. Write your takeaways. What have you learned from today's learning? Key in your answer, no, mga anak, for you to win 20 peso worth of load. Yan. Ang hirap yan, Wrap up oh. ito. Nagbabasa ka, may ilaw ka sa ulo. Ha? Nagbabasa ka, pero umiilaw. You can have your ilaw. summary in one or two sentences. Yes, yes on in one or two. The oh, first picture. Masyadong mahaba. Ayan. May mga nakasulat dyan. New criticism, moralist. Meron din dyang gender with the response. Okay, yung pangalawang picture, may salamin, may magnifying glass, tapos may nakasulat na lens. Tapos yung isang lalaki naman, nagbabasa siya, biglang umilaw yung ulo niya. Ting ko na na. Ayan. Hirap niya, no? nagbabasa ka, biglang umilaw yung ulo mo. <laughs> diba? Sabi nito, oh, may bata dito, sir, gusto gusto ko talaga yung kwento niya, lalo na si Christine Benitez. Ha? Hindi. Hindi, <laughs> <laughs> anak, hindi si Christine Benitez to ha, si Paz Benitez Marquez. Oo. Oh, oh. Okay, ah, okay. And that's for our wrap up. What yeah. can you say? Or how do you summarize? What learning have you gotten for today's lesson? Mm -hmm. ano ba yan? Ano ba yan? A man has a fluorescent on his head. <laughs> <laughs> ano ba yung unang picture? Okay, since we're talking about Ayan, may sumagot na approaches. si Cyril Labagnoy Feliciano. Sabi niya, analyzing and understanding well the literary text. Ang sagot yes, niya. Oh, pwede na yun. And how do you analyze? Paano Tama naman analyze? siya. Nag-a-analyze siya. Yes. Meron pa ba? Ibang kasagutan diyan? Tama ka po, anak, ano? Uh -oh. And we consider that answer because that's also a very bright idea. Yes. Okay. Tama naman yun. Sige. Shall we reveal now, Ma'am Bebs? Ayan. Ayan, meron, meron pa. Another answer here. Side de la Cruz. Yes. Side de la Cruz, sabi niya, uh, in critiquing, we project our ideas, understanding, and opinions regarding literary pieces. Okay, and here is an answer from Alwin. Literary approach is a lens by which we interpret or use literature. And let's see kung tamang-tama ba yan, kung swak na swak, Ma'am Bebs. Of course, because that is... Patingin. Ta -ra 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 -ra. Ayan! Dahil marami sila. Tama ka rin, anak, ano? <laughs> literary approaches are lenses we use to interpret or analyze text. text. Ayan, ang may pinaka-best answer. All of you really are correct. But we look for the best answer. Naman, yes. Bebs? Si Alwin. So, okay. Ay, may humahabot pa si John Mar, oh. Yes. Um, we congratulate all those yes. who participated. Ano mga anak? Let's now move to the final task, which we call the... Um, let's title it, Let's Collaborate. It's collaboration time. All you need to do is to call us or to... Um, call us by uh, group call na lang or video call. Of course, dahil kulab ito, two learners or more ang kailangan natin. Ganito lang ang ating sistema. Okay? We are going to give you an excerpt of sample literary critical approaches and analysis. Thumbs up kapag tama bang yung nagamit na idea or approach. Thumbs down pag mali. Then, call us and explain what's the excerpt all about. Let's have number one. Make a critical... Evaluation, okay? Thumbs up or thumbs down. 
here is now your excerpt. Okay. Does the excerpt use a read response approach? Yan. Tawagan nyo kami ah. Pwedeng video call. Sir Dennis, anong number? 0927-213-6257. Okay, ako 0968-519-1133. Okay. The movie Cinderella, which was released in 1950 by Walt Disney, is a short story that portrays social cultural reference and social ideology and views at the time. The aristocratic system that led the country or kingdom and how society sees the meaning of life. It also depicted how people are being classified. One cannot join the ball without wearing a nice gown just like Cinderella. Ayan, tawag kayo sa amin, ano? At sagutin namin. Yes. Ayan. O sige. Let's have, sir, may ano ka? Dito, ati, iti, ma, ikon mo lang siya. Paano ka? Sige. Hello? May tumatawag na? Yes po. Maliwanag ba? Yes, yes, yes. Hello, MJ? Po, ma'am. Sinong kasama mo sa group niyo, anak? May kasama ka ba? Kasi collab ito, dapat may kasama. Wala po. Alak, tawag ka ng kasama mo, hindi pwedeng wala. Okay, balik ka pag may kasama ka na. Balik ka ng bahay niya. O, di ba sinabi ko, dapat laging may kasama? Kasi need natin ang may kasama. O, sige, mag magdagdag ka ng isang kasama dyan. Hintayin kita ulit tumawag. Kasi I don't like to... Ano, disobey the rule. See you later. Call back. Sige po. Sige po. Ayan, sayang naman. Ano? Yes. Oh, sige. Thank you, anak. Pero still, sundin natin yung rule collaboration. Zero nine. Does the excerpt use reader response? Alam niyo paano niyong malaman ang correct answer dito? You look for clues in our text. Tungkol saan ba tong text na to? Kasi nag-analyze na siya eh. Ipipinpoint nyo na lang sa akin kung ano ba talaga ang mga clue words. Ayan, tatawag na siguro ito. Okay. Okay, ayan. Hello? Yes po. Okay, Mami meron. Ano, kasama si Celia. Okay, kasama si Celia. O sige anak, can you please tell us your answer? Hello Celia. O sige. Uh, Ma'am, ano po, thumbs down? Why? Um... Because it uses spike system and not read the response. Okay, what make you decide na ganun siya? Sige. In the excerpt, social ideology, aristocrat system, classification of people were mentioned. Ipinakita po ang deep and tay na karapatan ng mayaman at mahirap. So this excerpt is an example of Marxism criticism po. Okay, thank you. Sige, sige. Please. Um, name niya is Blas MJ and Celia Ramirez. Thank you, mga anak, ano? Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. let's Ayan. see kung tama thank sila. You. Thumbs down, yes. At mukhang naintindihan ng ating mga anak ang ating topic for today. Yes. Why it is thumbs down? Yan, tama. We have to underline the words. Yes. Kasi pag sinabi natin Marxism, it's social classes. Okay. Now, can we still have one? Yes, kaya pa, no? Okay, let's have number two. This is now the last activity. The fable tells the story of a tortoise who is ridiculed by the rabbit being slow and challenges it to a race. Ito yung kwento ng ano? Ng hari ko na na rabbit at saka yung the turtle. Ayan. Does this excerpt use Moralism, yes or no, thumbs up or thumbs down. The fable shows at the moment of challenge and encounter the predetermined outcome was reversed. The strength became weakness and weakness transformed into strength and when coupled it with steadfastness, truly, you will win. Okay. Siguro dito, dahil nakakuha naman na tayo ng answer sa ating collab, let's just hear it from the chat box na lang. Okay, to give chance. Yung unang magsasagot dyan ng tama, kayo ang panalo. Does it use moralism, moralism? or hindi? Thumbs up, thumbs up or, or thumbs, thumbs down? down? Sagot na po, number two na. Up or down, in key in your answer box. in our chat box. Alright, we have from 10 Kamagong on Jasmine De La Pena. Thumbs up. Sabi niya. Christina Cassandra Valdez, thumbs up din, Ma'am Jen. Yeah. John Mar, Yan Waria, thumbs up. Joanna Jamaica Castro, same answer. Bradley Manzano, Riza Urbano. Yeah, mostly answer, uh -oh. thumbs up. Let's reveal the correct answer. 
Tama. Ah, Thumbs Marie. up. Ah, ang tamang oh. nauna ay si... Jasmine. Ang Jasmine de la Peña of 10. Kamagong. Ayan, ang galing naman ano, ng ating mga okay. estrogen. Congratulations. Ah, sige, Ma'am Bex. Okay, so congratulations to our winners. There you have it, our dear learners. Our lesson for today on how to come up with a critic using the different literary approaches. Of course, don't forget to answer the validating question about our lesson posted in our Facebook page. Why do we need to know the different literary approaches when reading literary pieces? Enjoy answering! Okay, on behalf of my fellow grade 10 English teachers, Mom Beverly Ramirez, and Mom Venus Jaylin Tao, and of course, Sir Dennis M. Mendoza, and our technical specialist for today, is Sir Mark Bagamaspad, I would like to leave you a quote from an anonymous writer. Your value does not decrease based on someone's inability to see your worth. Till next shift for another hashtag. Lesson accomplished, accomplished in grade 10 English. English. Goodbye Bye. and stay, stay safe. Everyone. See you on the fourth quarter. Facts and information. Today's learning for you normal. With capable teachers whose heart and soul are divine. Delivered knowledge inside your home through 106.3. Dance Radio. Fully dedicated to serve the public in tribute to education, reproduce of radio-based instruction. We are pleased to deliver the utmost aim of education only here on 106.3 DWDRFM. People on 106.3 Dance Radio. Dance, Dance Radio. Prepare yourself. Ang silid aralan sa radyo, hatid namin ay makabagong paraan ng pagtuturo at kalaman. Mapaumaga, tanghali o hapon man yan, ang istasyong magbibigay impormasyon kahit sa man. Alright, here we go. 106.3 Dance Radio. Doña Aurora National High School, Santa Rita, Aurora, Isabela. This 106.3 DWDR-FM.